Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to Lollipops to Die For. I'm your host, Stephanie. And this is my co-host, Simo. <laughs> and today we are going to talk about a horrific, horrific uh, case that happened involving a Greyhound bus and this sadistic murderer. Mm. So in 2008, Vince Lee... And that's L.I., not L.E., uh, now known as Will Baker, murdered a 22-year-old carnival worker, Tim McLean, who sat next to him on a Greyhound bus and said, how are you doing? <laughs> Lee savagely stabbed him under McLean after McLean dozed off. After stabbing McLean, he decapitated the body and ate part of it. When the bus driver saw him stabbing the man... Tim McLean, he got the passengers out and locked him in the bus. At one point, a passenger tried to get into the bus to help McLean, but Lee kept stabbing him. So without further ado, let's get into this horrific tale. This is the detail of all this horrific murder. Um, on July 30th, 2008, Team McLean, who's a 22-year-old Canadian man, pretty much uh, going about his way <laughs> to get home, I guess, um, he was stabbed, beheaded, cannibalized while riding a Great Hound Canada bus along the Trans-Canada Highway about 30 kilometers west of Portage a La Prairie, Manitoba. So on March, uh, on March 5th, 2009, his killer, the 40-year-old um, Vincent Lee, uh, was found not criminally responsive for this horrific murder unbelievable so this is when all started on july 30th 2008 um tim mclean a carnival barker was returning home to winnipeg after working at the fair in edmonton he departed edmonton on board of greyhound bus 1170 to winnipeg via yellowhead highway through such such Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't pronounce this one. He sat at the rear, one rope um, ahead <laughs> of the toilet area. So at 6.55 p.m., the bus departed and uh, from a stop in Ericsson, Manitoba, where a new passenger, Vincent Lee, uh, who's entered the bus um, and he this was described as being a 40 year old man with a shaved head and sunglasses originally sat uh, first at the front of the bus but then moved next to M uh, McLean following a scheduled rest stop so he initially was in front and then went in the back McLean barely acknowledged him maybe because he was sleepy and he went back to sleep uh, at his window seat with his headphone covering his ears. According to witnesses, McLean was sleeping with his headphones on when the man sitting next to him suddenly produced a large knife and began stabbing him in the neck and the chest. After the attack began, the bus driver pulled to the side of the road and he and all the other passengers fled the vehicle. The driver and the two other men made an attempt to rescue McLean, but were chased away by Lee, who slashed at them from behind the locked bus doors. Lee ultimately decapitated McLean and displayed his severed head to those standing outside the bus through a window, then returned to McLean's body and began severing other parts and consuming some of McLean's flesh. Witnesses stated that this continued over a course of the next few hours. How creepy mm. is that? So basically at 8.30 p.m., the Royal Canadian Mounted Police um, from La Prairie have received a report of stabbing on a Greyhound bus uh, west of the city. They arrive at the, at the location and they find the suspect on board of the bus mm -hmm. still uh, being prevented from escaping by a few other passengers and a bus, the bus driver and a truck driver that had stopped 
and provided a crowbar <clears> to basically <throat> uh, stop him from getting out of the bus. Mm -hmm. uh, the other passengers were huddled on the roadside. Some were puking, some were crying, some were vomiting, some were in disbelief. Um, basically, the suspect had earlier attempted to escape the bus, but then because the other the the truck driver basically stopped him and put the crowbar the driver had engaged into also the driver of the bus had engaged with the with the truck uh mm -hmm. driver into using basically he tried to drive away with the bus but uh, the bus driver stopped uh stopped it by doing the emergency mobilizer system and basically stopping the bus from moving jesus so so by nine <clears throat> sorry by 9 p.m police were in a standoff with the suspect and had summoned special negotiators and heavily armed tactical unit. The suspect ultimately paced the length of the bus and defiled the corpse. Police officers then observed the eating parts of the body. During this time, the officers reportedly heard Lee say, I have to stay on the bus forever. On July 31st, 2008 at 1.30 a.m., the suspect attempted to escape the bus by breaking through the window and the police arrested Lee soon after that. He was shot twice with a taser, handcuffed, and placed in the back of a police cruiser. Parts of the victim's body placed in plastic bags were retrieved from the bus, while his ear, nose, and tongue were found in Lee's pockets. The victim's eyes and part of his heart were never recovered, and in spite of his vehement denial, are presumed to be eaten by Lee. Mm. 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 Meanwhile, everybody that survived the incident from the bus were, you know, interviewed. And I think at, uh, soon after at 10 a.m. the next day, basically, they took the other passengers, took them to a local store, replaced their belongings, which they didn't even have because they were evidence now. And uh, they eventually took them to Winnipeg and reunited them with their family. Mm. Uh, but basically, one witness named Gar Garnet Caton said the attacker seemed oblivious to others when stabbing occurred adding he was struck by lee's calm demeanor mm. and there was no rage or anything he was like a robot stabbing the guy jesus so you know we 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 do this podcast not to glorify the killers we never want to glorify and and give praise to these <clears throat> to these sadistic acts uh, brought on by not only just this case but the multiple cases mm -hmm. that we do so instead of like glorifying the killer which just like watching this and I've watched other YouTube videos over this this topic and any of these like cases I get so enraged mm -hmm. like I don't want to glorify the killer at all I I honestly don't give a shit about him and I I wish him only to be rotted but ah uh, we are gonna find out exactly um this what are. happened with this this fool um who is now walking the streets mm -hmm. under Will Baker mm -hmm. um so Timothy so we want to acknowledge the one that the passed gentleman away. who passed away, Timothy Richard McLean Jr. He was born October 3rd, 1985 in Winnipeg, uh, Mentobia. He grew up uh, both in Winnipeg and in Ely, Mentobia. He was 22 years old at the time of his death, and he had been working as a carnival worker, specifically a carnival barker in Edmonton, Alberta. So on, uh, on December 21st, 2008, five months after McLean's death, his girlfriend Colleen gave birth to their son. So you can only imagine. Mm. Um, so if you want to talk about Lee, where he's from. Okay, so Lee. <laughs> so basically, Lee Wei Guang, he's born in uh, China. Uh, he was born in Dandong um, <laughs> on April 30th, 1968. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the second of three children. Uh, his father was a custodian. His uh, mother was a math teacher. So he doesn't come from, he comes from no. a smart he comes bunch, from of fam a, bunch of parents. A decent family. Yeah. He was born a month premature, mm -hmm. but he was noted by a psychiatrist that in his youth, uh, Lee was... Um, was very sickly and he exhibited uh, developmental delays learning mm. to walk and talk um only around the age of five so um interestingly enough he um 
He thrived in academics. So at age 19, Li began studying automobile engineering at the Wuhan Institute of Technology, from which he graduated with a bachelor degree in computing um, engineering in 1992. He mar from 1994 to 1998, Li worked in um, Beijing as a computer software engineer. So he wasn't dumb. No, he wasn't. Uh, he married his wife, Anna, whom he met while working at the factory in Beijing mm -hmm. uh, in June 1995. According to Lee's wife and family, he displayed no signs of mental illness, although his father noted that his son was stubborn and restless, and right. he had tendencies to always fidget and move around. That's pretty much it. So that doesn't really trigger a no. murder. No, no, not, not at all. So... We'll cut to. We'll cut to the what? We'll to, what happened to him? I mean, his end. mental health deteriorated, right. and ultimately, he flew like back to China and stayed a couple of days, and then he came back. Um, but the Canadian courts found that Lee was not criminally responsible after his doctor diagnosed him with schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. The cannibal now known as Will Baker, so that is his new name. So if you all like know Me somebody by that name, and they happen to be Chinese, <laughs> go for so it. That's a little <laughs> sus was granted on an absolute discharge by Mentobius Criminal Code Review Board. Baker walks free without any requirement to be monitored by authorities. When he when he appeared in the courthouse on the charges for the second degree murder, the only words Lee re repeatedly uttered was, please kill me. <laughs> Lee's tri trial commenced on March 3rd, 2009, with Lee pleading not criminally responsible on the account of mental disorder. This means he accepted that the offense occurred, but claimed that he was not that he was unable to form the necessary mental element or me, or mens rea. Um, so basically, he was convicted. He was to going to the loony bin. He he got off. Yeah, he stayed, and now he's free. He actually, after a, a certain amount of time, I think it, he stayed. He's in, free. He, he walks stayed. among the Canadians once again and rides buses with them. Well, the interesting part is <laughs> they he stayed in the Lunabin for six years mm -hmm. under monitored uh, dosage of medication mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And six years, you know, they gave him medication, they gave him therapy, he right. had free meals, mm -hmm. a warm cushioning bed. Meanwhile, the McLean family had no son. Uh, he they couldn't no bear, father no, cause, no cause, father for the little yeah baby. because she was born like five months after right and also they have no um, no forgiveness no for this, justification no, uh, no justification absolutely not like he never paid for what he did no in any and way. horrific so my advice stay away from Canada because <laughs> <a little> <laughs> if somebody takes one of your family members they're gonna walk free right. Well, interestingly enough, you would think that at least the the court system would be like, okay, he basically not just killed the man, mm -hmm. but he ate pieces of a human being right. with no regard to the people around. So basically everybody was around. He was holding his decapitated head while eating his heart and eyes or whatever right he was showing it yeah. to the people. Can you can only imagine he's right. showing it to the people. But the interesting and coming up part, through the window and trying to like when he tried to get out the door, he had the right. knife and he was wailing it while they were holding with the crowbar. They were holding the door shut. The interesting part is that he got no um, punishment for this, for no. being a cannibal. Not just a murderer, but a cannibal. Yeah. And the, the, the fact that even now people use the whole excuse as, oh, I was temporarily mentally insane for it and the mental illness, when in fact, I'm well, not denying he could have had, but that's not an excuse for killing someone. Well, if you can prove in court that they're they were sane at the time of the uh, of the actual incident, then mm -hmm. they don't. You can't use that. Right. You can't use that. Well, it's not. He has no um, evidence for it, and basically, for six years in his loony bin, he was an exemplary uh, loony bin patient. So in the end, oh my God, you get scots free and mm. you live, go about your day. Right. And uh, interestingly enough, what this coming from a human being that was not, that was raised well by good, yeah. educated human beings. Yes, yeah, seems to be. Yeah. And just what? You got triggered by Some, sitting next to a sleepy guy? Something like, went terribly wrong. 
uh, it may, it puts perspective into the core system, sorry to say, um, to, for us, especially for me, and I know you share this view, that's, I'm sorry, that I have no mm -hmm. empathy for, or mm -hmm. compassion for this kind of human being. No, me either. Um, me either. And he could rot in hell for what I care, because that's no excuse to not just kill someone, but eat someone, leave someone else without, leave right. a families, because... Mm -hmm. You know, Timothy McLean was basically a son, a brother, a cousin, somebody's future husband. Exactly. Like, why would you do that and not exactly. even, and then claim, oh, it's temporarily insane. Exactly. Well, I'm sorry, if I start killing people, just know I was temporarily insane. A yeah, little bit. Right. But now you've said it on YouTube, so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> right you have the evidence so you have proof that you were consciously aware <laughs> right right <laughs> but i think even in this case most yeah. likely he was like like the witnesses mm -hmm. were saying he had no evidence of being triggered right. uh enraged right something put him on, over the edge like right. you know normal people let's say are True. he had no, no traces of that so sure. therefore he can't even claim i was temporarily uh, led to insanity because nothing led you to insanity but he did get off he did get he off scot-free so yeah. so he um, did something right. yeah you know the sad part is it gives a little bit of um of evidence to future murderers and psychopath on what to do sorry mm -hmm. to say because obviously if you kill people in certain just countries just so you know just so you know hmm. um some of his jobs that he did he was a janitor a mechanic, <laughs> a cashier at Walmart, a McDonald's restaurant, and a newspaper delivery. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> when you meet people in that oh, area. Let me go shopping. Oh you, my God. You go to Walmart just and you remember. Mm -hmm. you never what, is the, what is the saying we say? Truth is always scarier. Truth is always scarier, guys. Yeah. and Keep behind, that in mind. And behind closed doors, you don't know. Yeah, exactly exactly so yeah we yeah. just wanted to uh give a little bit of an explanation on this heinous crime because it happened on a bus while riding the bus yep and the second thing is um i was more enraged by the fact that uh timothy mclean got almost no coverage mm -hmm. because even though he was the person that was murdered and cannibalized while meanwhile will baker thrives in the community and of course. in the crime world. Yeah, I mean, know? it just promotes. That's why I want to spend more time focusing on the actual victim rather than the, the, the killer, killer because, yeah, yeah. why promote them, right? Right. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're sorry for what happened to the McLean family. Yes. I hope you find peace. And I honestly hope you find Will Baker and uh, give mm -hmm. him what he didn't get in jail. Yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. Until the next time, guys, remember, truth is always scarier. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.